My name's Brady Heron, as I think we've probably established. I'm originally from Australia. I was originally a newspaper journalist. I worked for this uh, newspaper called The Advertiser, and then I moved to the UK and I started working for the BBC. And I did both of those jobs for about seven years. But through a series of events that I shan't go into today, I eventually found myself making YouTube videos, uh, which is what I'm gonna be talking about today. Uh, I, I run various YouTube channels uh, about various subjects. I'll talk to you about what a few of them are very quickly. Uh, the first one that became moderately successful was called Periodic Videos. This is a chemistry YouTube channel. We started off making videos about all the elements. It's now more of a general chemistry YouTube channel. Uh, it's a collaboration with the University of Nottingham here in the UK, where I live. Uh, various professors feature in the videos, but by far the most prominent and famous is Professor Martin Polyakov, who you can see on the screen at the moment, hopefully, with big frizzy scientist hair. He's a, he's a, a great person and we've been working together for over 10 years making these chemistry videos. I'll, I'll come back to him shortly, probably. In making videos about all the elements, we've gone to all sorts of amazing and interesting places which has included the Gold Bullion Vault at the Bank of England. We were actually the first people to get to film there. There's hundreds of billions of dollars worth of gold uh, all in one place. It was, a, it was a remarkable sight. It's still probably one of the most amazing things I've seen with my own eyes. I couldn't believe seeing all this gold. That's just a small fraction of it you can see in that picture. We also, for one video, uh, etched the world's smallest periodic table onto a human hair. Appropriately, it was one of Martin's hairs, and you can see the periodic table there on a hair. Another YouTube channel, uh, also with the University of Nottingham, is called 60 Symbols. It's kind of like the physics equivalent of the periodic videos channel. These are videos about physics. It's called 60 Symbols because originally there were going to be 60 videos, and each one was going to be loosely based on a symbol used in physics, but we've blown past that and have made hundreds of videos now, but we've stuck with the name. So 60 symbols. Uh, and we've done all sorts of amazing things in making those videos as well. This is, this is when we visited uh, the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN underground. So filming there is just an example of, of something we've done. A channel that spun out of that was called Deep Sky Videos. This is actually an astronomy channel. Uh, you can see some pictures there of telescopes we visited around the world. We love visiting telescopes. And we're also making videos about a famous series of astronomical objects called the Messier objects. There are 110 of them, and we've almost finished doing all 110 of them. Objectivity is a collaboration with the Royal Society in London, and this is about sort of the history of science. And we go down into the Royal Society archives and look at all sorts of famous uh, scientific objects. There's all sorts of things that belong to Isaac Newton and Hawke and all these famous scientists. That's, that's lots, of, lots of good fun as well. Number five is the main thing I'll be talking about today. Uh, hopefully some of you know what it is. It's a mathematics YouTube channel. We started focusing on numbers and general mathematics and it's gone all over the place and has grown into this enormous monster. It's the most successful thing I've been lucky enough to work on and I'll talk more about that uh, shortly. A few things we've done over the years. This is the, uh, the mile of pi. We printed out the first 1 million digits of pi onto a continuous mile long piece of paper, rolled it out on a runway and made a video all about pi along the way. It's a really good fun video. It's, it's worth a look if you ever get time. We also did pie with pies. Here we got some meat and pastry pies in the UK, which is a bit of a UK delicacy. And we made a circle and a, uh, a circumference and things like that and uh, calculated pie using the pies. These are probably more gimmicky videos, but I think sort of the staple of number file, as David alluded to, is interviews with uh, real mathematicians, uh, math communicators, some, some of the people you see on the screen, dozens and dozens and dozens more, just talking about interesting aspects of mathematics and numbers, mathematical principles. There are hundreds of these videos. Hopefully I'll talk a little bit about them as this talk progresses. Uh, I'll make a quick mention to a channel that's spun out of Numberphile, which is called Computerphile, which is all about computer science. Uh, it's kind of like a sister channel to Numberphile. I don't have as much to do with this. It's made by a chap called Sean Riley, who's very talented and, and handles most, most of that. But it's a very successful channel and, and well worth a look if you are so inclined. A few statistics for people who like these things. Over the years, these channels have been running. Uh, you can see there the number of subscribers these channels have, the number of videos that have been made, and the number of views. Just today, Numberphile passed 500 million total views on the channel, 
and a few months ago across all my channels they're not all listed on this list uh we passed a billion views overall across all the videos so that's like that's, that's lots of people watching the videos and myself and the people who help make them and all the people in the videos are, are very uh pleased and proud that so many people have taken the time to to watch some of these videos an interesting statistic is that the number of minutes people have spent watching these videos is as of yesterday 5 billion 40 million 440 thousand 682 minutes and i'll save you doing uh, a conversion that i like to do that is 9590 years that's 9590 years taken taken from human productivity is one way to look at it it's a lot of time people have spent watching youtube videos and i know i'm as aware of, it, of anyone that the sort of the cliche about youtube videos is they can be a bit of a waste of time and cats falling down staircases and things like that so that's what i want to address today what is the good of all this does any good come out of all this uh let's give it a go and let's discuss a few things that i think have been good about making these educational videos and putting them on youtube over the years starting with really obvious things is the educational value of them people use them to learn things on their own they're also used in schools a lot like they don't necessarily follow like a syllabus or a curriculum but i think teachers like using them to inspire debate or to fit in or uh, complement what they're teaching in the classroom here's a comment from a teacher i'm a secondary school mathematics teacher in new zealand i use your clips in class to help motivate students and show them that mathematics and science is fun it also shows them that there are more people other than myself who love mathematics. That's a real theme of all the videos on number file and the other channels is the stars of the show, are the actual mathematicians and the scientists. And I think students seeing that mathematicians have so much fun and enjoy their lives and their careers so much can be really helpful and inspiring. And is a real thing that I'm really pleased about that happens on number file. Here's another classroom, Adams grammar school. The students there regularly watch the videos together as a class but all are regular viewers at home the channel helps to showcase the wide variety of uses mathematics has and the many avenues that are yet to be explored or that you may explore if you go on to do maths at university which i think is quite useful as well you know there are certain things that have to be taught at school and sometimes for time reasons the really cool fun stuff about mathematics you don't hit until university or you become a professional mathematician and with number five videos, I think we like to pull back the curtain a bit and say, this is what's coming. If you stick with it and you stick with it, this is the cool stuff you might get to do. Uh, just beyond that, I do think videos like these also do, ins do inspire people and change people's careers. I mean, I can't walk around at the University of Nottingham these days without people coming up to me and saying, uh, you know, I've been watching the sort of videos you guys have been making for so long that they're the reason I'm at this university, which is a, a really nice feeling. Sometimes they'll come up and say, I've been watching your videos since I was a child. That makes me feel very old, but also makes me feel very good. Here are some other comments. Leonardo, 60 symbols will make me change careers. I need to study physics. And another person here saying, your videos really got me into science. Thank you very much to all of you. You are the reason I'm studying chemistry. Andrew in London, your videos inspired me to re-enter the world of academic science several years ago. And as a result, I'm now doing a job that I truly love. This is an interesting, very recent story. This is a, a, a chap named Tom Peterkin. On the picture on the left, you can see him at school when he started watching 60 Symbols and Deep Sky videos and got him really into physics and astronomy. And the other picture with the funny hat is the day that he gets his PhD in uh, physics and astronomy at the University of Nottingham where he went to study because he was so inspired by the professors there. Uh, they wear funny hats when they get their PhD. He doesn't normally wear that. Uh, but the thing I like is that not long after that, and I didn't know about this, I didn't know who Tom was purely by chance. We made this video called Time Slicing Galaxies, which was actually what Tom was working on, a new way of studying galaxies. And you can watch the video to find out how it works. But we made a video about Tom's work. And then later on, I found out Tom had studied at the university as a result of watching 60 Symbols videos. It was a kind of nice circle of life. If things had come full circle from watching the videos to being featured in the videos. Again, it makes me feel old, but I asked Tom afterwards about that. And he said, I do remember loving hearing actual researchers. There it is again, actual researchers 
talking passionately about the things that genuinely interested them. It reminded me that physics and science in general can actually be really exciting and is all around us rather than just being a list of prescribed and fairly abstract formulae to learn for an exam. So there's that example of a school student seeing the actual research as the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, if you, if you can stick with this thing. Now, another thing, another criticism of YouTube videos that you hear, and it's not totally unfair, is that that could be quite passive. And is that a good way to learn? Here's an example of a fifth and sixth grader watching uh, number five videos on their iPad, which is, you know, I guess that is reasonably passive. I'd like to deal with that with a few points now as well. Is this purely passive? Because I don't think it is purely passive. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples why. Here we have uh, uh, Andy showing us a picture of his daughter explaining tree three to her friends at the kitchen table. Tree three is this enormous, enormous number that no human mind could possibly comprehend. We made a video about it with Tony Padilla. Uh, and after watching the video, this, this young lady got really inspired and had to tell her friends about it at the table. I have to tell you about this amazing number, how big it is. You know, the word is being spread as a result of watching the video immediately afterwards. Here's uh, Clement who watched a video with Alex Bellos about the recommend sequence and straight after the video, he got coding. He wanted to explore this further himself. He wanted to see if he could draw it, if he could make it, if he could learn more about it. So people are getting into this straight away after watching a video. Uh, Svester Stankova made a video about pebbling the chessboard and here's an example of someone who's you can see the laptop there they're watching the video and at the same time they've gone and got out a chessboard they've got out the the pebbles and the markers and they want to explore this themselves as the video goes along this is surprisingly interactive in number five videos everything is written on brown pieces of paper it's a bit of a thing we do and here's a here's a young a left-hander I note I'm a bit obsessed with left-handedness uh, with getting his own piece of brown paper so he can do his own number file working out on a piece of brown paper at home based on things that he's been watching. I don't, I don't, I just think this is a really cute picture of the girl with a number file poster. So I included that one as well. But again, quite interactive, quite, in, quite an engaged audience, not just something they're looking at while they wait for, to cook some something in the microwave. Anthony says, I take way too much pleasure in pausing number file videos and doing the working myself, which is something we really like to hear. I'll show you an, another good example of some interaction. This is a 17 gone, a 17 sided polygon that the famous mathematician Gauss showed could be drawn just using a compass and straight edge, the traditional way of construction. It was one of his many, many great and interesting accomplishments. In fact, the 17 gone is, is so significant and famous. If you go to MSRI, where David, who did the introduction is director, you'll see one of these drawn on the door. And in fact, the address of MSRI is 17 Gauss Way in, in tribute of this. So it was only fitting, of course, that I asked David himself to do the video about the 17 gone. And here he is doing the construction. He used an old fashioned pot of ink as well, just to make it more, more real and old fashioned. Unfortunately, that also made it a little bit more inaccurate. And as a result of using ink, sort of small, small, not mistakes, but small, imprecisions that he made got amplified over time. And as he went through making the, uh, the shape, it got away from him a little bit. Here's, the, here's his final construction. And to make it a bit clearer what David's 17 gone looked like, there it is. You can see his 17th and final side that he had to draw wasn't exactly uh, ideal. But David was a great sport in the video and he kind of reveled in it. And I think he was able to use it also as a sort of a teaching and a learning experience. I don't know if he regrets it now because I talk about it all the time, but there is the famous Eisenbud 17 gone. But watching this video got people so interested and so inspired that over the next days, weeks, even sometimes now, people will watch this and get out their own compass and straight edge, or maybe they'll log onto a computer and start doing some coding to create their own 17 gones. We see them all the time. Here's that, here's that idea again. Here he is, Anthony again. I take way too much pleasure in pausing number five videos, doing the working myself. All these 17 gone's been made. Some people got really, really into this video and really, really into the 17 gone construction, including this chap who actually had it tattooed on his leg. But I will not make jokes about it because I once did do a talk and show this and I made a, like, a, an offhand comment about, isn't that crazy? Isn't that funny? Someone watching a number five video and getting a tattoo. And after I did the talk, a young lady, mathematician, uh, math student in the audience came up to me 
rather sheepishly and said, oh, thank you, I really enjoyed your talk. I really enjoyed a video you did about this thing called the dragon curve. And I actually have the dragon curve tattooed on my arm. So I'm now really careful because you never know when the next number file tattoo is, is coming. All right, I'm gonna try and do some mathematics now because this is another, I wanna show you how YouTube videos, and in my particular case, a number file video or a series of number file videos have actually resulted in some mathematical breakthroughs, some mathematical research. We're gonna talk about the sum of three cubes. I'm not a mathematician, apologies in advance. Here we go. The sum of three cubes is the idea that you, is that you can have three numbers added together to equal an integer. We made a video about this called the uncracked problem with 33 with a chap named Tim Browning. Now here's what it's all about. Three numbers, A, B, and C, cube each of them, add them together. So cubing, I assume you know what cubing is. A times A times A is A cubed. Can, you can make every single integer, every single number can be represented using this method. Now you probably think, if, you, if that's not clear what that means, let's, let's do an example. The number 11, randomly chosen. Can you represent the number 11 as the sum of three cubes? Yes, you can. Here's how you do it. Three cubed plus minus two cubed, a bit tricky with the minuses, but you can do that, plus minus two cubed is 27 minus eight minus eight is 11. You've done it, that's 11 done, right? Now mathematicians say every number can be done using this technique. I actually told you a lie, mathematicians don't say that. There are exceptions, there's a special pattern of exceptions. You can't do four, you can't do five, then you can't do 13 and 14, 22 and 23. Basically what you can't do, this has been proven mathematically, you can't do any number that's represented as 9K plus four or 9K plus five. If you wanna see why that is, you can go and watch the video. Trust me, that's proven. So we're gonna ignore those numbers. But every other number all the way to the end of the number line can be represented this way. They think. So in this video, the uncracked problem with 33, we dealt with a glaring problem. There are three numbers below 100, so quite small numbers, that they haven't been able to find a solution for. And these are just baby numbers. These are less than 100. 33, 42, and 74. You should be able to represent them as the sum of three cubes. We can't find them. Are we wrong? Maybe you can't represent all the numbers of sum of three cubes. We haven't proven it. There's no like bulletproof proof. Hmm. That's what this video was about, this, this dilemma. Until there's a rigorous proof, these numbers are a real thorn in our side. They make us, should we, should we be doubting this? Now this video was watched by a chap named Sander Hoosman who had access to a powerful computer and was able to put together a, 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 co a code, an algorithm to do some checks. And amazingly, he found a whole bunch of numbers, sums of three cubes, including the one I put on the screen there, that enormous negative telephone number, plus those two other telephone numbers, cubed equal 74. That's one of the three numbers. He'd, he'd done it. He'd found one of those three numbers. This was, in, this was incredibly exciting to us. A number file viewer as well. He actually, with help from Tim, who was in the original video, wrote a paper about it, uh, what his, these new solutions he discovered, including 74, which was, you know, very exciting news. In the footnote in the paper, this was the most exciting part for me, of course, inspiration set forth by the YouTube video made by B. Harron. That's, that's me in a mathematical paper there, by the way, people. I'm no mathematician. There we go, on, on the number file video, the uncrack problem with 33. This was, this was great. Obviously, we made a video about it. It was called 74 is Cracked. We were really excited to report about it and it seemed like a wonderful story. Of course, 33 and 42, still out there, who knows? Until I got a message from Tim from the original video saying, problem cracked. Look at that, 33, look at that enormous number cubed plus those two negative numbers cubed. Another one had been cracked. The smallest one, the smallest number that was unaccounted for was now accounted for. Just to think these numbers had been floating out there all that time 
undiscovered until, well, they were discovered. It was Andrew Booker. He's a mathematician at the University of Bristol who, had, who made the discovery and told us, told us about the number. And he had watched the previous number file video. He'd come up with some new, it got him thinking. He came up with new, more efficient, better algorithms, got access to some powerful computing to start a new search. And after a long time, the computer spat this out. Uh, he wrote a paper. We're not a footnote anymore in this paper. This is the abstract inspired by the number file video, the star of the paper. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit proud of this, if you can't tell. Anyway, it was, it was great work by Andrew, and it was very generous of him to acknowledge any tiny, minor inspiration we provided. But there you go. Uh, the full, there's a full paper is quite detailed. There's some pretty hardcore mathematics here. And also, you can see on the screen the computer the supercomputer at the University of Bristol that was used to make the discovery. So there we go. We made another video, of course we did. 42 is the new 33. 42 was now the only number below 100 that had not been cracked, had not been found. Now, uh, Andrew teamed up with an organization called Charity Engine that involves uh, collaborate collaborative computer power where you link up computers all around the world to get some hardcore computing and a mathematician called Andrew Sutherland at MIT uh, to search deeper. Can you, can you guess what's coming next? I bet you can. Here it comes. Here's how you do 42, the meaning of life, the universe and everything. Those are the numbers you need. Those are the first numbers you can find that will do this. Fantastic. Everything below 100 accounted for. We've, we made a video, The Mystery of 42 is Solved, which is a bit of a clickbaity uh, uh, title, isn't it? But it's completely true as well. But I know people are a bit fascinated with the number 42. So I didn't choose it. That, that happened to be the last number they found. There we go. So I said to Andrew, what next? You can't just, there were, there were more numbers beyond. There are, there are an infinite number of numbers that haven't been accounted for. Where are you going to stop? What are you going to do? And here's where I'm going to tell you something else I haven't told you yet. Mathematicians don't only think that every number can be done this way. They think every number can be represented as the sum of three cubes, an infinite number of ways. There, if at each integer, except the exceptions. For each integer, there are an infinite number of numbers and combinations that you could put together to represent it as the sum of three cubes. Here are just the ones, some of the ones that are known for the number nine, for example. It starts with two, one, and zero. Then 217 minus 216 minus 52. But then you get more and more numbers, bigger and bigger numbers. Infinite number of ways. Now, in this field, in this area of research, the number three holds a special status. And I'll tell you why. Can you represent three as a sum of three cubes? There's a very, very easy example that I'm sure some of you have probably already thought of. One cubed plus one cubed plus one cubed is equal to three. With a bit of paper and a pencil, you could probably find another one within 10, 15, 60 minutes, maybe more if you're me. Minus five four and four. You cube all of those and add them together. That will also get you three. But none others are known. The next one, and mathematicians think there's an infinite number of them. The next one is lurking out there somewhere. And this is quite, this particular example is quite famous in this area of mathematics because of this paper from the 1960s by a chap named Mordell, who in talking about this general problem, used three as an example. And he, he talked about these obvious ones, but then he said, it must be very difficult indeed to find out anything about any other solutions. And because of this one line in a paper, three became like the sort of the post child or the pinup for this problem. Where's the next one? Where's the next one for three? If there's an infinite number, can we find it? Computers were used for, you know, 50 years. People were always trying to find the next one for three. They couldn't find it. So, Andrew said to me, you know, the thing I'd really like to find in my heart of hearts as an expert in this field would be another one for three. The next one, where is it? Are you ready? You know what's coming. Here it is. He found it with the help of a computer, not with a pencil and paper. 
Look how big those numbers are getting now. Isn't that amazing though? There were those one, 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 and that uh, was at minus five, four, I can't even remember anymore. Those, those tiny little piddly ones. And the next one of the infinite ways you could do it, maybe, is this one, is this whopper. It's amazing that that was the next one. And he found it. So for him, I think that was kind of mission accomplished. I don't know if he's still searching for other ones. He probably is. We made a video about it. Three is the sum of three cubes. That's the last video we've made on the topic for now, I promise. Now, of course, the most important thing to find and the thing the true, the true mathematicians would like to find and Andrew would like to find is the actual proof, the rigorous proof that doesn't require computer searches or finding all the numbers. It's like just an elegant proof that you can look at on a few pieces of paper that shows you don't need to check. We know for a fact that all the integers can be done and then they can be done an infinite number of ways. That proof still awaits us. Maybe someone watching, maybe someone who watched one of those number five videos will be the person that finds this proof. I would love it if someone who watched the number five video is the person who proves it. I don't know if and when it will be proved. That's one of the fun things about mathematics. I hope it's, I hope it's uh, accomplished during the lifetime of number five because I would love to make the video about it. That would really complete the set, wouldn't it? But here's the point for me in this new world of communication, YouTube videos, social media, this new world we live in, it's not just like, uh, you know, making things and doing things for fun. We started with this one video and just released it out into the wild and said, look at this interesting thing. And as a result of it, all these collaborations, all these amateur mathematicians, professional mathematicians, people who may never have met, have been working on papers together. It's sort of bringing things together. It's inspiring thought and it's all becoming part of this mix, this international mix and collaboration of things that, may not have happened if it, if it wasn't for these videos. I don't know. It's only a small role and we certainly haven't contributed any of the brain power by making the videos, but it is all part of the mix and it's something you may not have thought of when you thought about the benefits of making YouTube videos about mathematics. A final point that I would like to make though about number five videos, and I think it's the most important thing, and I've already kind of touched on it earlier, is all the people who are in the videos the mathematicians, the math communicators, the people who have got any kind of interest in it, who not only give their time and uh, talents and knowledge to the videos, but they also give their personalities to the videos. I mean, I'm not a mathematician, I'm a journalist by trade. So one of the things I most like having in the videos is not just the content, the mathematics and the knowledge, it's the people. I think it's really inspiring to see these people, to see how smart they are, but also to see how funny they are, to see how passionate they are, to see how much they love what they're doing. I think showing that to young people, to students, but also just showing it to the world and the wider community is incredibly powerful and incredibly useful and can sometimes be lost in some of the more dry and general reporting of science and mathematics. Sometimes we forget that it's humans who are doing it and really interesting, amazing humans. And I hope that across all the YouTube channels I've been working on and, and other people make about science and mathematics, that is starting to come through. We're starting to give people more of a glimpse of who these people are. Uh, Rob, James Grime is a, is a star of many number five videos and this t teacher talked about how he, they took their maths class who were number five fans to meet James Grime at a school today. They said it was like meeting a rock star. You know, we've got to a point now where young people watching YouTube videos can find meeting a mathematician like meeting a rock star. I think that's, that's really great. The University of Nottingham is forever having people of all ages, but especially young people wanting to come to the university to visit the chemistry department and meet the people in periodic videos. There was one story of someone who came, uh, was traveling through England they were, they were from the United States. They landed at Heathrow and uh, eight hours later, they were flying off somewhere else in Europe. And they said to the young son, we've only got eight hours in England. What do you want to do? And the young lad said, I want to go to Nottingham to the chemistry department and meet the chemistry professors who make periodic videos. So during their stopover in England, instead of going to Buckingham Palace or the Tower of London, they got in a cab and drove up to Nottingham to go and meet Martin Polyakov and the rest of the chemists. I think that's an amazing thing that's happening and it's a testament to how inspiring all these scientists and mathematicians can be to young people. There's always fan mail coming in like this to people like uh, 
Martin Polyakov. And I should point out another another fun thing that has happened is Martin, the chemistry professor I spoke to you about before, actually recently got a knighthood. There he is getting his knighthood from Prince Charles. And part of his, I mean, he got it for lots of reasons. He's an amazing chemist. But part of his citation mentioned his contribution to uh, YouTube videos and chemistry on YouTube. I don't know, but I think it might be the first time YouTube has been mentioned in an official knighthood citation. I'll have to check that, but I'm going with it for now. There are MSRI, where David is the director, is this incredible institute. Uh, it's a fantastic place to go and do mathematics, but it's not the easiest place to get to without a car. It's on top of a mountain overlooking uh, the San, San Francisco Bay in Berkeley. It's a fantastic view, but you've got to, you know, if you want to get up there, it's a bit of work, especially on foot. But we now have cases of people who are uh, number five viewers who are walking up the hill to go and have their photograph taken at MSRI. It's like become like a pilgrimage. This is a maths institute. And we've got young people who want to go there and just see the place, see the place where the maths is being done. Like it's like going to Yankee Stadium or something like that. I think that's amazing. I'll just end, end with another, another example. This is, a, this is many years ago now, but this is a young chap named Eddie who's from Arkansas. And Eddie's mum that year didn't have a lot of money for presents and got in touch with us and said he really loves watching the chemistry videos on YouTube. Can you help us out? Christmas morning, here's, here's Eddie unwrapping his present. You can see the look on his face, the look of excitement as he's opened his present and look at what he's got. And he's got a framed picture signed by the chemists at the University of Nottingham. And I think that shows how things have changed now where a young boy in Arkansas can be over the moon to be getting a framed picture of chemistry professors on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean because they're his heroes. And I think it's great that we're moving towards a world where more and more mathematicians and scientists are becoming heroes as well as all the other people who have traditionally been our heroes. Uh, that, that's all I was gonna say in my presentation. Mm -hmm.